I don't know where you're going with too close to home. Um, I play a lying, cheating husband in this, and it's not it's not too close to home. It's uh, it was uh, something that I don't know anything about. Um, I, no, it was you know he needs to be a lying, cheating husband so that he can be away from the home, so that the boy next door can. Get get into the home. If he's there, it's going to be much more difficult. So I like that. I like that point of the storytelling to have him trying to get back because now it's a male presence in the house. A man, when a boy is literally trying to come in and sleep with his wife, and succeeding. I don't think we're giving anything away. People know that's going to happen when they go see this movie. I was thinking about that this morning. I was just. I could have been up for the boy next door just a few short years ago in my mind. But in reality, you know, that's 25 years ago. And the time goes by so fast. I just took my Christmas tree down. And, and I know in a couple months I'm going to be taking all those ornaments out to put it back up because years just click by. And I was looking at Ryan yesterday when we were, Ryan Guzman, who plays the boy next door, thinking... This kid is just getting started, and I am a few years away from retiring as an actor. And I want to retire, but I didn't do half of the things I thought I would do as an actor. And there's some disappointment in that and some uh, being fulfilled of getting to do things that I never thought I'd accomplish in life. I think it's more interesting. I, You know, I listen, everybody... Everybody messes up in life in one way or another. I'm 54. There's, when you read the script, you're glad that, you, that no one's asking you to take your shirt off. <laughs> that was 15 years ago. Yeah, I didn't have a gray hair on my chest. Now I can't find a brown one. That's just weird. That's just weird because you, you know, you think that these people don't have any idea that you're alive. And the fact that, you know, someone as famous as Jennifer knows something that I've done in the past uh, is just bizarre. I like it. I think they should go because it's it's exactly what every movie should be, just a little bit of escapism from from your normal life. You go into a dark theater, you forget, you shut your phone off, you get some popcorn, and you just get taken to a to another place. And you know, when you leave a movie theater, if you leave, it's a generally an hour and a half uh, that you'll go into a movie theater, and when you leave the theater and you feel like, wow, that time really flew by, and you enjoyed the experience then I say it was worth the price of admission because you can also, it, costs, it also costs eight or nine bucks to see a movie. You can get more money, but you can't get more time. You'll never get that hour and a half back. They stop making time. And if you leave that theater feeling pretty good about it, I think mission accomplished. I like that idea because that's one of my favorite movies. That, uh, uh, Fatal Attraction. That's one of my favorite movies. And of course, this reminded me of an updated teenage version of Fail Attraction. Uh, because let, let, let's face it, there's, there, there's young girls that are going to go see this movie who have no idea who Glenn Close is. You know, they're just at, they're out of that age range. I think this is uh, going to be a new story for them because most of these young girls that will go see this, they probably haven't seen Fail Attraction. Or they think it's some old 80s movie, which it is. And uh, I think this is a really updated, nice version of a, a stalker film. Well, I had heard all these rumors of this guy. He's tough. He's like John Wayne or John Ford or just like he's a guy's guy. And couldn't be more quiet and on point and thoughtful and got a great laugh and tells funny jokes and takes you aside and says, well, what am I, well, maybe this, what do you think about this? This is, this is a guy I'd like to work with the rest of my life.